So, Ryan, let me ask you a question real quick. I, sure. I think we talked about like the topic of like lucid dreaming and stuff before. Very oh, yeah. I've, I've had some very fun yeah. lucid dreams recently. <laughs> yeah. Are, are you uh, familiar with the idea that you should never ask someone like what time it is or anything like that in your dreams? You know what? Uh, time is a very difficult thing because like a, you ever just like if, when you're dreaming, you ever just try to look at a clock and just like yeah, it's all fucked up. Yeah, uh, that that does tend to be a thing. But for me, uh, I think time is just very relative in my dreams. Like uh, mm -hmm. I can screw up a dream entirely with the situation yeah, and be like, yeah. mm, you know what? I didn't like the outcome there. Let's do all of it all over again. Let's just uh, start from mm -hmm. the beginning. And then we'll we'll run straight through and have a different result. So I heard that there are certain questions that if you ask people in your dreams, that they'll get like upset and angry. And I think that's interesting. Like I wonder if that's like a like self conscious like you're asleep. Stop trying to think about real shit, you know? Or if it's like <laughs> I don't know, if, Sam. That, or if that it's like you're messing like... with the the astral, and they're like they don't like that, you know? No, I, I I don't know. I mean, like uh, it seems like if you ask the wrong questions, you can upset people in real life. I mean, tr maybe that's just how your brain's like. Somebody would could react like this yeah right? like you know uh, someone could uh, react very poorly if i shout fat in a crowded theater that is very true mm, true hey, you, you know how it goes. i thought that was uh <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about it at work one of these recent days and i had to stop <laughs> mm. uh, a lot of people think that it's a good idea to get like a D, D inspiration from your dreams but like a, yeah. uh, I, I don't know i mean how much D, D implications can you get from hey this this baby's foot just fell off and then it grew off a new one and now i just got this uh little baby foot like a, I got just kind of like asking right around here. like what can magic. i do with this okay magic answers <laughs> everything <laughs> you know what that, that's fair enough fair enough what's more magical than D? &D? and other <laughs> nerd properties <laughs> you know I, I i can i can get behind some nerd properties mm -hmm. and without further ado i'm gonna cue the intro here while well, we're speaking of getting our properties. cameras back on track Hello, everyone, and welcome to, let's see, what was the name of the show, Sam? Uh, Dungeons and Talk Shows. I am your host, Dungeons Orion. I am your host, Sam, <laughs> here to present you Dungeons, Talk Shows, Monsters. You, you know what? I, I am I am on board for uh, nice. what Bob's love got that. going on right here. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can you hear me okay? Are you okay? Yeah, yes, we can. Oh, and you can for see me the, too, the although I'm backwards. out there. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm shuffling things camera. around. <laughs> yes, I'm reverse. Like, I'm graphic. I like it. It's uh, this Discord makes me use uh, OBS Studio when I'm on it. So, you know what? Uh, that's cool because like I'm just kind of moving things around with OBS right now. So, that, are you uh, uh, double yeah, OBS? I'm yeah, all, all the OBS. With two OBS, what would that be? Tobs. Tobs. All the Tobs. All the Tobs. Let's see if I get this. Wait, okay. Oh, there I see. You guys are you guys are muted as well. Okay, it's all working. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna leave yeah. it alone. There, that's right where. I apologize it needs to be. where it took me a little while here, but we're going. Hey, no worries. No worries. And then I can just move this one up and boom. So eh, why don't you introduce yourself? <laughs> yeah, mysterious voice and cat. I'm uh, Starboy01. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> uh, no, I'm Bob Lament. Hey, how's it going? There we go. Uh, I think I got our cameras looking uh, decent now. 
I know, I know why a lot of crying was happening. You took away uh, the favorite toy, which is right behind you there, that board. Ah, uh, yeah, good old plank. You know, plank. It, it I'm was sorry, a, plank. Yeah, it was a it was a time uh, wrestling a plank out of the hands of Johnny Two by Four. But you know, mm-hmm. it, it it was well worth it. He he's been an excellent third chair to this podcast. Yeah, he oh, yeah, fought yeah. hard and earned his spot. You know. His eyes are a little bit. Uh, one's going one way, one's going the other way. You know, yeah, you, maybe you he, don't want uh, to talk about that. He's sensitive. Yeah, yeah. I, that's what I'm saying. I, you know, <laughs> little, give me the. You know, hmm. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, what can you uh, tell us about uh, what you do? Because for our listeners that aren't familiar with your work, yeah, oh, what I do. I, yeah. apparently i just jump around and talk to random people and the internet uh <laughs> but uh no i'm a host of a, sh- a show called static radio um wherever you can search for things so you know google or Bing or <laughs> yahoo um and uh i you know just make up make funny shows basically we <laughs> We do a weekly show. Every week we tell stories and hopefully they're funny and sometimes they're not. And sometimes it's just a big snooze fest. Are they uh, like yeah. fictional stories or are they like life stories? No, no. They're all, uh, all from ripped from the pages of my amazing, uh, existence. I <laughs> love that. <laughs> you know? Yeah. No, all the stories are something that are, it has happened in my presence. Mm. Or happen to me. Every once in a while, we may have a secondhand story, but very, very seldom. We really so try basically to what you're telling us is we're going to get an amazing story out of you by the end. Of this oh episode. well, <laughs> I, I said that sometimes it doesn't work out. So you know, well, you know, but uh, stories, no, we, jokes, I mean, you throw yeah, them all at the wall, see what sticks. But yeah, I've been telling stories for a long time now. It's been terribly long, terrible. You're 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 what some would call the ye old storyteller, you know. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, I I get that a lot. I get the ye old storyteller, uh, shut up, old man. Uh, <laughs> you know what are you staring at me for? You know stuff like that. You know, yeah, the, yeah. why are you talking about me? How to get in yeah. the house. Yeah. The we never dated in high school. You're lying. <laughs> All that stuff. But yeah, that, that's, I mean, that's kind of what I do. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know, just over the last, uh, uh, I guess, two years now, there's, there's been this uptick in people guesting on other people's shows. And I'm like, I could do that. What the hell? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah that's what we're doing. Yeah, <laughs> I contacted you through the through a horrible uh, website called Matchmaker FM, which sounds like yeah. some type of it, it, illegal it like dating a, site or something. It, it, it really does. does. <laughs> I, I had my doubts when our uh, one of our editors uh, suggested that we start <laughs> using it, and yeah. I'm just like, yo, this, this sounds like a that. Russian bride. What are you local singles in your area? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It sounds like they're just trying to hack your all your data or something you put your local How podcast are you? in your you area yeah. yeah i mean like it, you, you don't need to hack all that stuff you can just ask me <laughs> what's your dog's name you know stuff like that yeah it's just like hey, go ahead take my social security you, number yeah. and all you the know. bad credit that comes with it <laughs> you ever seen that video where it's like they walk up to this lady on the street and they're like are your passwords safe? And she's like, yeah, you know, it's very safe. You know, my dog's name, the school I went to. <laughs> and then he immediately went and asked her all of those questions. She was like, yeah, you know, the dog's name is Ben. I went to this yeah, my school. maiden name. Yeah. <laughs> like, my grandmother was, like, was Hazel. Cooked, man. <laughs> Cooked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's, well, I mean, I don't know what else you want to know. I mean, that's kind of the thing on me. I, I'm pretty much an open book here at this point. Yeah. Well, I'm sure as you can kind of uh, tell, if you haven't already, we are mainly like nerd kind of. Yeah, um, I'm on the Nerd Militia uh, Discord <laughs> site. So talk I'm about saying. all kinds of things, uh, games, TTRPGs, yeah. 
Um, Do the nerd militia just have slide rules and pencils? Is that the whole weaponry of the nerd militia? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, absolutely. Rubber bands, memes, dice, you you name it. You know, dice. Yeah, yeah. A long time ago, I had this whole uh, idea for office wars, and so like you you had to fight each other, but only could use items that you had in your office. So like <laughs> staplers, or you could bend paper clips and use rubber bands to shoot them at each other. That's uh, I yeah, like that. I, I, improvised weapons. Yeah, all improvised weapons in the office. You, know, you could strangle somebody with your uh, USB cord. Dang. I think that's what the nerd militia should have. <laughs> the gar- the garage would be it's made of the USB cable, right? Yeah. Yeah, you know what? Who hasn't wanted to kind of uh, get the jump on one of their coworkers with the USB yeah. cable? Look, everyone played that game, Kill Your Boss, like in like 2006. <laughs> and they'll be uh, going, you know what? Oh, Orion, you need to give up game. that old uh, keyboard. You could get a new one. You're like, hell no, this thing is a weapon. I'm not getting rid of this keyboard. Yeah. This thing's solid. Yeah, like it. I think Plank would be, you know, pretty solid up in uh, this one. Yeah. He's basically a keyboard. Yeah. Might be borderline illegal. I mean, there's not, people usually don't have too many Planks in their office. The Geneva Convention would be very upset if we knew. <laughs> mm. but, yeah, uh, I mean, I, I don't think, if you, if you were to listen to the show, I may have used that as a story. I can't even remember at this point. <laughs> You just put staplers in blank. That's right. <laughs> well, when it comes to storytelling, you, you've come to the right place because uh, oh, here at Dungeons and Talk Shows, uh, uh, one of our primary things that we talk about is a, a lot of D and D, Dungeons and Dragons, and like a, a lot of that does come down to storytelling. Sure. Did you I believe you. Yeah. <laughs> experience in the D and D realm. Uh, I have. Yeah. I won't say that I have, uh, you know, a cornucopia of experience. I do have limited experience, but, yeah, but. and it's a giant butt in that one. Nice. Mm, and I, yeah. this is going to tell a little bit about my age, but I had access, although they were not mine, I was borrowing them from a friend, to all the original Dungeons and Dragons books. Ooh. So the Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Player, Dungeon Master's Guide, Right, mm. monster manual. You, if you look um, these up, you can't even get these things anymore. For Christ's sake! Yeah, I'm sure your your dad probably has them. Huh? <laughs> See, yeah, that, but yeah, I, I had all those, and so yeah, I remember the terrible thing was I read them like a book. <laughs> Hell yeah, that was my thing, and so yeah, I know it's <laughs> evolved. The dragonology <laughs> book in like middle school. <laughs> it's all evolved <laughs> since then, and so forth. But I did play. Uh, a bit whenever I was younger, but it's been so long ago. But mm. I, I did, I was a dungeon master once as well, uh, many, many years ago. So, yeah. But I mean, nowadays it's probably just all, you know, out of hand. I was a thief, neutral good thief. <laughs> nice. I couldn't be bad oh, because yeah. I was a nerd and I thought being bad was terrible. <laughs> I've since aged out of that. <laughs> right, right. I, I feel that, like, still to this day, if I play a video game, it's just like, ooh, like, I, I, I could do all these bad things, but being bad makes me feel bad. And I don't want to <laughs> feel bad. My mom said, don't be bad. <laughs> So yeah, and uh, I mean it's I it's fun, but you're right. You have you basically you make the adventure for the yeah. uh, the rest of the people, right? Who are playing? Yeah. Who unfortunately are probably was, just like, a bunch of guys, but you know. Yeah. Uh, you'd be kind of about it, like you're like a like director a... for like a movie, right? And they're all your actors, right? But they write like their own script, basically, like. <laughs> Exactly, and they get to choose the choose your own adventure, right? So. It's, yeah, but it's so like <laughs> it, it's so chaotic. Like I, I ran some games for my kids, and it's just like the, the escalation of uh, my son being like, "Okay, listen, Dad, I, I'm going to use magic to make." this ice cream tastes like poop and I'm going to give it to people. <laughs> <laughs> That's classic. That's great. It, it is. That, 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 that kid's got some imagination. Case, dude. Like <laughs> He's going someplace. It was yeah, he, no, he's just not going to kill him. He's going to make it taste like poop. So then they're all off ice cream and he can corner the market and then he makes it. Like, <laughs> they're like, I can't. He's ice got the corporate mind, man. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. going to go far. He's an entrepreneur. 
<laughs> uh, he very well might be. He's been like, a, we, we got this like light battery powered weed whacker and he's just been taken to the yard all over the place. <laughs> You're like, how did you know what you wanted to be when you grew up? I played D&D with my dad once. Yeah. <laughs> played with him and then he gave me a clicked. weed whacker. Now I'm getting <laughs> I, he, he could easily make some money with that. Like I, I gave my kids an ultimatum. I was like, listen, if, you, if you're if you upset with the situation, then maybe you need to go make some money. And now my daughter's painting rocks and my son's uh, whacking weeds. <laughs> Get them started early. Oh my <laughs> Children yearn for the mines. Painting rocks? Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah she, she wants to sell them, them or like five bucks to rocks. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, she wants to. She wants to sell the rocks. It's like a. Oh, she's okay. been real. Uh, do it. Real on about making the a couple of these rocks look like strawberries and like paint, oh, paint a cat on one of them. You ever seen the people that do like the painted rocks and then they hide them places? Oh, then, like, like geocaching. Kind of. Then, like when you find them, they have like a little like I don't know. It'd be like a link on the back or like a page or something to follow. I yeah, found one okay. once when we went to these like. Who was it, like a Japanese garden or whatever? They had like a little yeah. ladybug one that I found on a rock. Yeah, yeah, those were that was actually art. You were stealing art from the. Oh, I garden. put I put it back. <laughs> oh, okay. I just hid it in a different place. Yeah, professional art thief. Yeah. Just, uh, you know. <laughs> I got I got two words: googly eyes. Exactly. You're a big box of googly eyes, and then that'll everybody will love them, right? You <laughs> put them everywhere. It doesn't matter what they look like. It's a googly, googly eye menace strikes. Rock. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I feel like I could do that for like a D and D minis. Just have like a little bunch of paper cutouts, and then just put the googly eyes on yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, googly <laughs> eyes. The players you know would love it. I'm, I'm making a stand. I'm putting googly eyes on every trash light in my city. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Get one of those big uh, ones. <laughs> googly eyes on all the routers in the ceiling at work, just because it was fun. And all the outlets. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant. No and one's plugging you, anything you in. Along, you look up and there's these eyeballs staring back at you on this little box on the <laughs> ceiling. Like, what the hell? Wow, that's fantastic. They're always watching. Yeah. <laughs> they got a, you know some the antennas are sticking out. Look like some kind of weird damn big creature. brothers always watching. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. Goodness yeah. gracious. Well, I, I how much do these rocks cost? Out of curiosity, I have a yeah, I have a uh, rock problem so <laughs> some people some people love rocks man they, they they do i think she wants to charge like uh what is it like five bucks a rock and i'm just like Holy okay shit. well <laughs> these like small like yeah. tiny uh, stones or no they, no like, like uh, they're just like uh, these like, rock hard rocks like, 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 uh, like your like hand that. or no yeah like hand size rocks no, you know? like like pet rock. hand. i i only paid five dollars for a, a rock from uh a uh, crazy horse uh, up there in uh, North, or South Dakota. There's a, they're making a statue, right, of, of crazy horse, and they're selling yeah, they're, the rocks that they knock off of it yeah, to look make. This up. It's yeah, on the Sam, side of a the, mountain. There's this. Uh, it, it, it's Maybe like a, uh, it's like a Native American Mount Rushmore. Yeah, that they're carving mm-hmm. with a big old horse and a big old guy riding the horse, yeah. and the guy's name is Crazy Horse. Crazy Horse, yeah. <laughs> oh shit, you're right. No, oh, I'm saying, yeah, I mean, yeah, they've been working oh, on that for years. Outside the gift shop, they have the all these rocks in a bin, like and you can pick for seventy you want. years. Damn. That, How's that for job security? All you gotta do is just spend your day like knocking rocks off a cliff and shaping it into a horse. You got like one chisel. <laughs> I think they're using dynamite still. I don't know. I, I it's it's a big project. You better talk. contact the aliens because they had it down pat. Yeah, they did it, <laughs> they did it all in one evening. You know. <laughs> kind of like uh, crop circles and whatnot, you know? Just, exactly. They just knocked that crap out in a second. Yeah, uh, I think at the rate Crazy Horse is getting uh, completed, it's just like, well, but by the time it's done, we'll have like another National Treasure movie, and then they'll ha- right. have that in- inside a Crazy Horse <laughs> instead yeah. of the uh, it- Mount Rushmore. They go- yeah, yeah, okay. they went inside the Mount Rushmore. Ron, the crazy Ron, Horse Ron, prophecy. <laughs> That's right. Oh, I love those movies. They're great. Shit, you learn, I, I need you to learn steal that for a D&D campaign. It's very really nice. And I like Nicholas Cage. Uh, D and D campaign where you go to find Declaration of Independence. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Mm. Damn. 
<laughs> you, you got me right there. Damn. A necromancer creates a document called the Declaration of Dependence. <laughs> <laughs> the Declaration of Dependence. I got you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the Declaration of Codependence. Even better. Oh my goodness. Now you guys are getting deep. <laughs> this is what we do here. We just we just cook. All right. <laughs> Sometimes the fumes are toxic, but we're cooking nonetheless. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. So which one of you guys? So you take turns being the dungeon master, or is is it always Orion, or is it always Starboy? Uh, uh, we we kind of like yeah. go back and forth. It kind of depends. I run well, a how campaign. many people are in your you know crew for playing? Is it just you two? Because that would be kind of not so fun. I don't <laughs> we have um, maybe like fifteen people on our Discord. Holy moly, that's a lot of play the Indian yeah. as a whole. Uh, um, we kind of like switch around who we have in our uh, campaigns, like uh, mm-hmm. usually around four to five players, and okay. it, it works out pretty well. Uh, all, like, all male? Uh, no, actually, no, it's, it's, it's 50 Really? Yeah, that's amazing. No, that, you know, that time's sometimes change. Sometimes we get uh, like new people who join sometimes for like a one shot. Uh-huh. Over, you know. Are they are they just writing a paper or something? They're like, ah, I told the I told them I'd play D and D once. <laughs> write, write about it. <laughs> no, we kind of like we're open to anyone to new players, especially uh-huh. like um, mm. the campaign that I ran for, uh, recently was kind of like the first one that I had like run to completion, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, I had run like one shot and stuff. They're like short lived campaigns. What was your, your one, name? Was the Star sessions. Boy? Was it? Was it, what was your name on that one? <laughs> oh, I mean, and I always go by Sam. It's just kind of like, oh, okay. Like, and your dungeon master Sam <laughs> yeah. tells you, so, like, I ran a uh, a Grim Hollows campaign, which is like kind of more of a darker setting. Um, mm-hmm. Well, hence the name. Yeah. yeah. Very, very yeah, much a Brothers Grimm type uh, right. thing. Oh, wow. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Get, so I, I got to play a role more of like the, the horror element. Yeah. Yeah, that's fun. That was a little fun. Um, I ran a, I don't know if you were a gamer at all, but I ran a Bloodborne ca- uh, one shot. Uh, I'm, I'm mildly familiar with some some of those. Yeah. yeah. But not so, all um, of this those. This time so. I'm looking to run a Monster Hunter themed one shot. Oh, that sounds fun. Yeah. Now, do you do this only in person, or do you do it online as well? I've never actually played in person, really. Maybe like <laughs> once when we were at Job Corps a long time ago. But we do oh, most really? of our stuff online. Yeah, it's one of those things where a lot of people are just so spread out all over the place. Like, I, I live in Backwoods, Maine, so it's just like uh, two hours just to be able to go to anywhere decent. So I, That's what I was going to say. You don't really need to say Backwoods. You can just say I live in Maine. <laughs> yeah. True. True. I love Maine, actually. I've, I've been up there a couple times. I love, uh, I love Maine. I think it's great. I've actually been you to the have- capital. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head now, but yeah, uh, it's a uh, Augusta, and I'm gonna have Augusta, to be going yeah. there. Yeah, I'm gonna be heading there Wednesday to oh, there you bring, see, a, look at bring that. a cat to a thing. I went. I, oh, a cat, really? Oh yeah, uh, my uh, my stepfather's cat. We're kind of like bringing that one. Uh, Is he the one that eight dollars to... or no? <laughs> Nah, I, I think uh, Sam's I, I the one that, that get his eight though. bucks. <laughs> yeah, I asked for more. <laughs> I buy a cat. Let's go. No, that's no. I I think Maine is a fantastic ghost. I, so now, Starboy, you are in Maine as well. No, uh, I I'm currently living in Virginia. Yeah. Um, oh well, you're, I met so Ryan. Disappointed in Maine by that when we went to the same school. Um, oh, okay. You we, went to we, Maine. Yeah, I went to uh, Maine for about a year. To go to trade school. Yeah. I went to Portland, Maine, which is weird because no one ever thinks of Portland as being in Maine, right? It's so yeah, cool. it's just like a coastal city. So it's just like, oh, yeah. wow, this is this is normal, like by everywhere else standards. And then like, yeah, a, yeah. You go so beyond I went that. to Portland and everybody's like, Oregon? No. What the <laughs> yeah. Oregon. That, that's, <laughs> that, that's basically what we kind of get. It's like if I couldn't imagine having to live in Portland itself, because like anytime you want to go anywhere and you got to look it up online, Portland and the, and then all the results just Oregon, Oregon, Oregon. <laughs> right. <laughs> I I often forget states like Oregon exist. To be honest, 
You forget <laughs> states like Oregon, really? Yeah, like I, Ohio. All right, Star Boy, how many states are there in the <laughs> union? I'm going to ask them. Uh, the did, you a, did you graduate? <laughs> did you get your degree? <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> this economy might have to sell a couple of them off. Yeah, <laughs> so there's uh, Middletown. There's East Coast, West Coast, Middle Coast. Middle Coast. <laughs> yeah, Middle Coast is definitely a state. Yeah, they're all states. Yeah, that, that's where uh, like it's Pennsylvania. In Fremont. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever happened? So to, you uh, guys went to college uh, together, uh, or or no? Yeah, well, uh, we, we went, went to, to school, yeah, yeah learn, doing welding and whatnot because metal work is fun. No, oh, you didn't go to college. So you went to high school together? Trade school. What? Like a like a trade school? Oh, like trade college. school. Okay, no problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I am I'm a community college graduate myself, but nice. uh not to brag. <laughs> <laughs> I did continue on, but I did go to community college. So so tra- you so you guys college, are both like this episode. What's that? Yeah, if, you like, if you like, if you like community college and googly eyes, hit like and subscribe. Yeah. So, did, are you oh. both metal workers then? Yeah. Uh, oh, really? Is it, That's fantastic. We both have a hobby for it, I guess. Oh, uh, you don't do that as your job, I guess, is what you're saying. Uh, we, I feel like we would both love to do that. As we <laughs> Now, is it big metal stuff or like the little metal stuff? Because then you'd be into the miniatures and all the pewter and all that kind of stuff. With all the more little like figure, a, figures. More like figures. a bigger welding type stuff. Yeah. But, yeah. but oh, I, I just happen to be like good at me. I have some welding that needs yeah. to be done. Jesus. Yeah. I think it's more like, like sheet metal. And okay. I would always like to do like a creative kind of like art, you mm-hmm. know, with metal work. I think that'd be really cool. I would mm-hmm. like to get into like blacksmithing. Or, you know, at least like replica mm-hmm. work would be really cool, I think. I there's, a, there's a guy around here that just cuts your name into a piece of metal, like fancy, you know, fun, nice. and sells it to you. So there you go. Your yeah. name. It's my name and metal. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think it would be so cool to make, like, because like, I go to like, conventions and stuff fairly often now. I uh-huh. see a ton of people who sell those, like, replica weapons of like anime and stuff oh yeah oh, oh my god. god they sell them for so much and they always look so cool so what was I the mean, last uh, con thing that you went to i went to one like last week actually i went to the um yeah. oddities and curiosities uh, expo okay and that was somewhere near yeah it was in uh it was in richmond maine oh <laughs> not richmond maine sorry I was richmond, just saying. Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about maine <laughs> richmond, <laughs> virginia. richmond virginia yeah yeah Oh, cool. um, which is kind of like a how to explain very like creepy stuff like very uh, pt barnies <laughs> yeah very like live specimens in the, um, in the uh, building for that <laughs> one or? i mean if you were into it they do have taxidermy classes you can take <laughs> 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 so like i don't know I don't know. But yeah, I'm, I'm really into that kind of stuff. I like bones personally. Oh my gosh. Stuff I couldn't like that. imagine. It'd be, my... The googly eyes is about as far as I'd go. I can imagine <laughs> seeing squirrels staring at me all day. Or my girlfriend is, in, she loves like the, uh, the entomology parts of it, like the bugs mm-hmm. and stuff. She likes to have those. She also likes the, um, uh, the live sure. specimens. You're not going to find anybody they, better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah she, she loves the live specimens i don't really oh the live I like ones them. oh gosh yeah but i'm not really like a mammals guy you know i like reptiles and stuff so like oh, if really? i were to get one uh, I would want, like, you guys lizard, together like, you raise because the reptiles eat all the bugs exactly right <laughs> i like reptiles <laughs> and bones she likes bugs and live specimen mammals there you so, go like, i'm it telling works. you it's a match it's like you guys should have a detect- detective show we together. About this last episode, but if you're not aware, turtle skulls look like dragons. All right, mm. <laughs> they're so cool. Really, but they're tiny though, right? Tiny. They're dragons. tiny, yeah. Like I imagine, like if you know you're like a tribal person, you know, mm-hmm. and you find like just some bones out while you're scavenging, 
and you see like a little turtle's going, you'd be like, it's a fucking dragon, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, it's the tiny, dr- tiniest dragon I've ever yeah. seen. Yeah, well, the dragon it. must be like a like a, a hatchling nest somewhere. Yeah, or something. Exactly, yeah. I think that's how, I think that's where like lore and stuff started. Because like I've seen like now that I've seen a ton of different skulls, especially of like horned animals, you know, mm-hmm. any person who's not like intelligent would be like, "This is a fucking demon." Like <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly, like being around a few hundred years ago, you just find like a a skull like that. You just like, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna go back into town and just tell everyone that I'm a demon slayer, and uh, wow, this is that. my catch. And they they would have no reason like not to believe you. They're like, they got the bones right there. No, <laughs> I you know I don't want to be the naysayer here, but you know I think at that point in time people kill everybody killed stuff so it's not like today where you know if you brought somebody a skull and they've only ever seen packaged food they wouldn't understand (laughs) that that's even a skull yeah Yeah, back then everybody's killing their own chickens and like that's just a chicken skull i don't know what you're getting on about if you if you were like traveling and you were like ah surely no one's seen an ox before you know, I got this. <laughs> they're killing them. There is this giant. Oh like, <laughs> I'm hungry. I'm killing my ox. <laughs> Man, I am so hungry. I don't know. <laughs> now I will. I will jump on board with you because you know there's the uh, the um, uh, elephant skulls because elephants yeah. weren't everywhere. Somebody brought an elephant skull to Greece and they thought that was a cyclops, right? Because it has the yeah, big I remember hole in the, and where the trunk is. And so if it was uh, somewhat not the one from the area, I mean, you couldn't just go out to the pond and grab a couple yeah. of frogs and bring those skulls up there. You'd have to go out, you know, on a little adventure. Like, I think like, that's what I'm thinking, too, because I especially mm-hmm. imagine, like, nomadic, like, cultures and stuff, maybe, like, Vikings mm-hmm. or something like that. They go to, like, Scotland and they find, like, bones that like, they've never Scottish seen. Skulls? I don't know. <laughs> they all look what kind of animals does Scotland have, I guess? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think like uh, their national animal is the unicorn. So you yeah. might be on to something. <laughs> so, so maybe they, they see something. They're like, whoa, people from my country will have no idea what this is. Yeah. I could say it's literally anything. I, could, I mean, yeah. th- well. this entire situation, I'm just like taking notes for the for next uh, D&D <laughs> campaign. Like, OK, it's so like every, a guy that shows up. Couple times was P.T. Barnum or something. I don't know that they were all. <laughs> That's smart. <laughs> uh, honestly, that would be such a great premise for a, an entire game. Like a, the entire uh, party, the whole group is just a bunch of uh, P.T. Barnum style charlatans. Like they're just like <laughs> gathering exotic things and be like, oh, hey, the, the locals don't know anything about this. Let's go. Have, rob them blind. have you guys watched um time bandits on apple tv recently it's a new show on apple time TV. Bandits. Oh, I haven't. yeah oh you should watch it because it's a lot of this kind of humor where you know you you because they travel through time right so right. they beat people from an older time and then they try to pull the wool over their eyes and it's funny they, it's very funny if you get a chance right. to watch it, you should. So. Because, like, I imagine, like, I don't know, it's like the Egyptians, right? They knew about dinosaurs. There's hieroglyphics and stuff. So, mm-hmm. like, I imagine they found, like, dinosaur bones, and they were like, mm. this I shit's crazy. I don't <laughs> think there's any dinosaur bones in the <laughs> desert. Have you, I've never heard of a dinosaur bone oh, being found in the See, desert. Have you? Really? Uh, I don't in, like, know. Africa? I mean, like, yeah. I, I would imagine the sand would just kind of be like, okay, nice. sandpaper process, just gone. <laughs> well, I also imagine, like, Sand probably preserves stuff pretty well. I mean, if it's, uh, I'm I'm skeptical on that. Like, I don't well, know the it science. Preserve exactly. the uh, pyramids pretty well, but they're made of giant blocks of granite and stuff. So, yeah, I, I'm no uh, archaeologist, but <laughs> if we have any archaeologists out there, <laughs> let us know. <laughs> yeah, feel or free to correct us for that matter. Yeah, but uh, no, it's, it's an interesting theory. I hope that you're right, Starboy. But, uh, I have no idea. I, I would love. I'm, to I'm just skeptical. The, I'm skeptical I, a little bit. I, I would love to see that the, they just find like a bunch of dinosaurs in inside the pyramids. It's just be like <laughs> it'd be like a ta- be like Attack on Titan, where like the, all the walls, like oh, they open them up and just get inside. It's just a bunch of giants, and I'm like, oh, they use dinosaur bones to construct the pyramids. Oh my gosh, oh, that would be wild. 
Now, Orion, you don't uh, aren't you know kind of worried about Starboy and his fascination with skulls? I mean, that's kind of. I mean, he may say, "I don't have a main skull in my collection." I don't have any currently. Oh, okay. Well, you just starting. I, don't, I was I was this close to buying one. <laughs> what were you going to buy? I hope it wasn't a a tiny dragon that you got tricked into buying for a thousand dollars. I almost oh, my, my, that was my logic. I was like, if I want one, it's going to be like you know, it's going on my shelf. It's got to be decently sized. Uh-huh. And there were a few that were in my price range. There were like goat skulls, you know. They had the horns. Those are probably my favorites. You, you could probably buy a whole goat for the price of that skull. I'll be Dude, honest with you. Yeah, they had a uh, cow honestly, skull yeah. for fifty bucks. I was tempted. I was like, there's no a way what, I could fit this anywhere. A cow skull. Big ass, like I'm telling you, just go for a drive. You will find a cow skull <laughs> for free. I was like, I was like man, if I have the space for it. I, I tell you, Sam. Like next time we raise some goats and we get one heavy. up for slaughter, give I'll, me a I'll bone. Save the, yeah, yeah, I'll save a skull. You got, you got a line on one now. Look at this. Yeah, Look, yeah I mean, if like, you can, dude, if you can, like goat tacos the, go hard. Get it like so. cleaned, you know. Get the get the bugs or whatever to eat the shmeat off and clean up the bones. You, I'll you, take it. you just need to befriend someone who works at a packing plant, and you can have all the skulls <laughs> you want. And all the bones. All the rat right. skulls like ever. You know dream. what? I, I happen to there's one like five miles from my place. Like I, I might be able to have the I might have the hook up there. Yeah, you I'm I many years ago I worked uh at a meat processing plant oh, as a God. young man. <laughs> Can you talk about that legally? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, it, it was ever, yeah, I can. It was everything. So yeah, yeah I mean, they have, a, they have this thing. Maybe they've changed the procedures, <laughs> but they used to have this thing called the inedible room. And that was all the parts that they didn't oh. use. So a lot of guts, right? Yeah. Because they didn't use it. Goes and, the hot dogs. Exactly. Well, I imagine no, these days uh, they, they use everything. And then and they went in basically into these giant uh, rubber made gray garbage cans. And then about I think it was almost every day this guy would come by and he would take all the uh he came by in like a garbage truck looking thing and he would load those uh big tubs into the thing and flip them into the back of his truck and it went to uh purina to make dog food okay yeah you know that makes sense yeah i could see that so yeah and uh but i mean as far as the you know bones and they used everything that has a use there's very not very much that would really go in an edible there was sometimes the terrible thing was every once in a while You'd have like a pig that was uh, had something really like wrong with it, like didn't you know? Like it, didn't, look, it, it wasn't going to make you know make the cut in the inspection, <laughs> and they'd throw it in one of those barrels, and then the whole thing went in the truck. So, Damn. yeah, and uh, and one of the most amazing things to me crazy. was, can you if if I were to say you're you're in a room full of guts in barrels, what do you think that smells like? Well, it can't be problem, good. Right? Like, it, I imagine it would all just kind of like have that like. If you had to smell, describe it, what would then, be the one word you could describe that in your mind? I mean, I mean my, my brain goes to like rot, you know, like like decay. Kind oh, of Ryan, smell. you're not thinking hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> it smells sweet. Yeah, I got to imagine because like the coppery kind of smell from like. It smells. Stuff. It smells very, very like overwhelmingly sweet. That's interesting. Isn't that bizarre? It, actually, that kind of makes sense because that's how people like usually describe uh, like the, the smell of a Bigfoot. It's 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 hmm. because it's not there for days, right? They get taken away on a right. regular it's, basis. It's not, so, it, but it's, it's just like very right very sweet. It it uh, it was alarming whenever I first experienced that. I'm like, I thought it was going to be the putrid or something. Mm. And here I step in there. I'm like, oh my gosh! It's like Willy it's Wonka's just, factory in here. It's really it's neat. Neat. It was like, bizarre, it's totally bizarre. It's like it's just like incongruous, neat. as they say. That's really interesting. So yeah, it, it but just if you're in somebody, you'll get all kinds of skulls. You could get, you know, especially if they do deer processing, because then you can get some deer skulls. And yeah, I, I always kind of wondered what those like 
you know, meat processors? Like, what do they do with all the bones? Like, I surely think they, they don't get ground get up. All of They're them. useful. Uh, a lot of them get ground up, but I'm sure you could get, you know, you could make an arrangement for $8. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, you just could probably to, get something. Yeah, slip them an $8 check. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This, hey, this is written make out. Make a frame at the, at the plant, you know, save me some skulls or whatever. That'd be interesting. Yeah. Sell them and I'll be rich. <laughs> but uh, I government th- love bones, man. <laughs> what? Why is your? What is your fascination? Is it just the shape, or is it the the fact I, that it doesn't look like what it does on the outside? Or that is part of it. Yeah, it's kind of like can I explain? It's it's like a way to like honor the form. In my mind, you know, like I I always kind of feel like, you know, especially I'll talk a lot about like Monster Hunter, right? I love the idea of using everything that you Mm -hmm. can, Mm. you know, the the idea of that, like, if you hunt it, if you kill it, you know, you should make use of all of its parts to kind of honor the life, Mm -hmm. you know, and if you can't use it, you should, you know, display it or you know, honored in some way or whatever like that. Oh, okay. But I feel like to me, it's very like respectful to be like, oh, I think, you know, what some people would find weird or like gross to find like a little bit of beauty in it. You know? That's interesting. That's a good take on it. I was just thinking since you guys like metal work, you should make metal skulls. I don't think that would be fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a project that I have in my mind. All right. I would love to someday, it would probably be a crazy process, but to like create every bone of like a metal dragon, you know, as like a sculpture. I think yeah. That would be <laughs> that'd be cool. I mean, that'd be awesome. I, you know, you, you get your, uh, you go, you know, to your connection down at the processing plant and get some bones. <laughs> And yeah, then you, just, could, you could cast some of them, and then you could cut some of them out of uh, different types of metal, and and uh, yeah, make a a, a metal sculpture. I in yeah. in my town, growing up, there was always like those really like ghetto like car mm-hmm. sale places. You know, they would have like those like junkyard sculptures, and they're fun. right, yeah. And they were always like they were a little like ugly, but they're always kind of like. Cool, yeah, there's, well, it has an aesthetic, right? I was watching yeah, yeah. Um, Furiosa today. I watched Furiosa, and and you know they had made helmets out of uh, skulls and everything. It was just kind of a mm-hmm. whole aesthetic for Mad Max kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, it makes I can sense. see where you're coming from. Yeah, no, no, no. I feel like um, you know some people have like they like to have the organs in like jars. You know, some people like to have you know. Oh, Ryan, this is really. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're going really now, off. Now we're here. going into the organs in a jar. I mean, that's why I'm specimen. You know, some people like the whole yeah. box. No, I know. I'm just teasing. When I was a kid, we had snakes in a jar. Like you catch a snake. Like, I, I think snake skeletons are some of the coolest. Like, yeah, they're very delicate. They're, they're so yeah. cool. And they're super delicate. Yeah. It's crazy that they're so strong and they're like alive. You yeah. Know? Well, like, yeah. this like frame. Is Not if you stomp they... on their head. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> And that's kind of like what I like to do here. My big thing is, you know, you probably get the idea. I like monsters and stuff. Yeah. So I like to do monster segments. Yeah. So you could do, you could even do, you know, imaginary things, just taking uh, bits and pieces. You know, I guess this is kind of on topic because today I am talking about a construct creature. So Uh, do you want to get into the monster of the week, Sam? Sure. Unveiling the darkest secrets of the creature of the week. I'm thinking Star Boys setting himself up to be the monster of the week. I don't know. <laughs> the, the real monster was Sam all along. <laughs> this is how I lure you all into my domain. I just get you interested in useless information. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you my dragon skulls. Wait a minute. <laughs> Door locks That's behind a machete. You. <laughs> dragon like, where's the dragon skull? I'm up. gonna make it out of yours. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hmm. Gotcha. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so this week um, I was looking into construct creatures. We haven't really talked about them since I think the Modron and like the. Um, it, it has been episode. a while. So I thought, why not? Uh, 
figured I would talk about a demon construct today, which is kind of interesting, called the Retriever. All right, all right. So is it like a like a metal demon dog? Is, is that what Pretty we're getting much. here? It sounds like so something we're... straight out of Blade. <laughs> it kind of is, yeah. <laughs> So, good, right? so a retriever was a living construct created by foul sorcery to operate as warriors and servants for powerful demon nobles of the abyss. They specialized in tracking objects and individuals that their masters desired. All right. So big on the, the dog aspects there. Yeah. These would be kind of like the demon bloodhounds, I guess. <laughs> oh, okay. So, uh, so I'd be a little of hell. Yeah. yeah, they're just like metal, so that's like worse. It's <laughs> much worse, <laughs> and it only gets worse. <laughs> the so retrievers resemble giant spiders with four forelegs ending in large cleaver like blades. <laughs> damn. damn. <laughs> and four rear limbs that were used for walking and that carried most of their weight. Their legs spanned over 14 feet, 4.3 meters, but they normally stood 12 feet, 3.6 meters tall, twice as tall as a human. A retriever's body size ranged in size from that of an ox to a mammoth, weighing an astonishing 6,500 pounds, uh, 2,948.4 kilograms. Despite their overwhelming weight, they were agile and quick to an unnerving degree. They had two primary eyes and four smaller eyes that gleamed malevolently as they peeked out from their carapace. Incoherent whispers and clickings were emitted from them because they could not speak normally. I think Hollywood needs to take notes, honestly. <laughs> could like could you imagine a monster movie with like just one of these things horrible. running about? Dude, mm. you have like a group of people like piss off a demon or something, and it's like, you know what? All right. <laughs> Sends just like a couple of these boys at you. <laughs> so it's got you know, six it'd, it'd be very eyes, it's like two eyes, two regular eyes, and two four smaller mm-hmm. eyes, is what you said? Right. So, uh, yeah, they have uh, two primary eyes and four right. smaller eyes. That's creepy. They have um, They're not four eyes, four legs but... that, and <laughs> unfortunately, no, they would be kind of cute with googly eyes. <laughs> just and, the four, uh, four googly four eyes, just like, like right underneath. At the end, <laughs> and then four legs that were used for mainly their... Uh, dress up like this for Halloween. Just to, yeah, stick the googly eyes on your teeth. Just, uh, just a metal spider, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> googly eyes. <laughs> Getting into the lore here. Retrievers had low intelligence, bordering on mindlessness. Unnerving. Unerringly striving to complete their task until completion or death. Despite their one-track minds, they still had time for cruelty. They would constantly seek to combine malice and petty sadism into their execution of their tasks. But their foremost goal was to complete their missions. Retrievers were especially valuable to the Lords of the Abyss, as their dedication and determination were something hard to come by. Other Tanari very rarely tried to interfere in a retriever's work, as doing so often incurred the wrath of the demon. All so right. their purpose was to hunt down and haul back whatever their master wanted. Whether an enemy, an escaped slave, or a lost or coveted item, their demon masters employed them for tasks too ugly for their own hands, but that other demons could not be trusted. It was highly right. unlikely that one would find a retriever not currently following some order, and if they weren't they were normally waiting outside their master ca- their master's castles, waiting for new commands. All right, so like yeah, this is very a, much a seek and destroy type situation. Yeah. Yep, we'll do what told to like a, a loyal degree. Yeah, <laughs> man's best friend, right? Uh, con- right? Congratulations, you combined dogs with m- spiders and terminators. <laughs> <laughs> Now you and I bet you're wondering Arnold, Arnold what piece version. of shit created these things, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Spider Terminator is just like that movie writes itself at this point. Yeah. So the original inventors of the Retrievers was a contested topic. Some claimed that they were originally made by Demogorgon, who crafted them with abyssal matter and evil spirits in order to hunt down his foes. Other purported that retrievers were the work of ancient primordials that demons learned how to command and began using them for their dark bidding. Some said that retrievers were initially created by the drow in order to traverse the abyss while collecting demons for use in their rituals. However, drow with access to retrievers rarely gave them orders in order to prevent the risk of, of the automatons being used against them. 
I, I so kind of like the Demogorgon that's... aspect because, like, I, I've been kind of getting into Stranger Things. I think they're getting like a new season sometime they soon. Are, yeah. 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 I, I've heard a lot. I think we talked about it a little bit, but the actors in that show were like pretty much done with it. <laughs> and that makes sense. It's been a long time. Yeah, it's been a few years. They all grow up, right? So yeah, they're all pretty old now. They're all doing other stuff. So those who believe that they were Demogorgon's creations claimed he modeled them after Babylon which are a demon race of spider monsters, basically. Uh, but those who favored the drow theory thought that they had the appearance because of drow in prison, Bebulous spirits in their constructs. So it could really be either way. Something the demon made them, something the drow had the idea and kind of just took spirits in the construct. Interesting. Once a great wizard stole a jewel of great power from Demogorgon, arrogantly believing that his tower's many wards against fiends would protect him from retribution. In the dark of night, a retriever managed to break into his home before kidnapping him and fleeing the premises. Either due to the weakness of his protection or because the construct of nature of retrievers allowed them to bypass such countermeasures. Because the constructs themselves are not fiends, they're constructs. Right, right. So get wrecked. <laughs> I imagine Don Gorgon was like, oh yeah, powerful wizard, huh? <laughs> Eat this robot. <laughs> I-, I love the concept of demons thro- sending robots after people. It's just, it's so cartoonish. Yeah. And, you know, some people may be wondering, what is Don Gorgon, right? We've heard from Stranger Things, this is a thing with a flower face, but not really. All right. <laughs> <laughs> So, Lord of the 88th layer of the Abyss, known as the Gaping Maw, referred to as the Imprisoned One by some followers of Helm, was the demon lord and lesser deity of domination and the draining of energy, an embodiment of madness and destruction that sought to drag all down to the infinite depths of the Abyss. He was known by many names, called Siosavash by the Yanti, Limogugun by the <laughs> father of the Kuotoa, <laughs> They're getting a little outlandish with some of them <laughs> titles and names. Ooh, goo, goo, goo. Ooh. <laughs> and Aman Ibor, the sibilant beast by the Troglodytes. The first Tanari formed from mortals' ancient fears, even his chosen race. All right, now this word, give me a second, because it's, it's, it's a son of a... <laughs> I mean, it can't be better, any worse than Demo Goo Goo. <laughs> no, 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 it's worse. Ik zit za chitu. I had to write out the pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It sounds Mayan or something. Uh, hmm. Dared not speak his name aloud. It alone could inspire oh, you, primal you terror. It. There, you spoke it aloud. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, he's fucking coming for me now. I guess. Beetlejuice now. <laughs> he's gonna send these it damn spiders like, at me. <laughs> God dang Beetlejuice again. Mm-hmm. So, the mere speaking the name of the Demon Dragon inspired fear in other demon lords. His self proclaimed title, Prince of Demons, was won by virtue of power and influence. Many demons challenged it, but none could defeat the Demon Dragon and claim it for themselves. Ah. So. A brief description of the Demogorgon. He is a two-headed, kind of multi-featured monstrosity. He kind of has, like, snake-like tails. Two baboon heads that have different personalities. He has, like, (laughs) clawed, kind of like gorilla arms, but they have, like, tentacles at the end. He has, like, taloned reptilian feet you know, he's a he's fucking crazy he's but a, them amalgam, were in, huh? yeah, yeah and that's that's kind of the thing he is the amalgam and he likes to create amalgams mm, it's kind of right. Morgan's whole thing is that they you know he likes to create things uh, as the minds kind of bicker between themselves you know they have constant creativity constant ideas you know so oh, yeah, they that, that mental ping pong yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Like that. They, just, they just love the creation. So a lot of people do believe that it is the Demogorgon that created the Retrievers. And I feel like personally, I would probably say the same. Because mm. it seems like up their wheelhouse. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> so getting into the abilities and stats of the Retriever here. They are large constructs, typically lawful evil. Um, so this thing's the size feet. of a horse. Yeah, pretty much. It said, uh, what was it, horse to mammoth size? So they could, they could range. Oh, wow. 
Goodness. Okay, so this is a, between the size of a car and a bus. Okay. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. A double-decker bus. Right. Damn. So they have immunities to necrotic, poison, psychic, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical attacks that are not anti- adman- are not adamantine. So, um, so I can weld it, is what you're saying. You can weld it. <laughs> it is the construct, so it is made of metal. You know, mm. whatever that counts. It, it just, it's just stand still. I have to weld you. Conditioned immunities are, as you can expect, cannot be charmed, exhausted, frightened, put on these goggles, or poisoned. <laughs> <laughs> so retrievers could quickly rip and tend most foes apart with their four claws, but rarely use their mandibles in combat, saving them from seizing their targets. Their most dangerous weapon, however, was their eyes. The smaller of which were capable of emitting magical rays, known oh, magical rays. Known effects were flame, frost, electrocution, paralysis, acid, pure force, and even petrification. Well, that's that's like behold. So a little sprinkling yeah. of like a beholder. Yeah, they they got mm-hmm. everything. Retrievers could find anything that their masters had seen, touched, or possessed a piece mm-hmm. of, so long as that they know the plane it resides on. They could be instructed to trap specific queries or be given a category to work within. Not only did they know the location of their targets at all times, they knew that of their masters as well. Hmm. So they always know where whatever they're searching for is and where their master is. Retrievers use their eye rays whenever possible, and if forced to wait until they recharge, viciously savage their enemies with their claws. When given a target they incessantly focused on, the enemy before grabbing them and swiftly plane swifting them away. Occasionally, other demons would accompany retrievers on their hunts by mounting mm. howdahs on the arachnoids and riding them during the trip. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> that's horrifying. <laughs> There's a whole lot of escalation in that whole description. Yeah, yeah, but they are fairly simple. For what they are, I suppose. Because there wasn't a whole lot of like lore on them, you know. But you know, those are those are retrievers. Use them, DMs and players out there, to your heart's content. <laughs> <laughs> I could even see these being, you know, modified and adapted. Is uh, you know, I mean, Gorgon is it, like you just bust out your welder. Yeah, yeah. I imagine like the party somehow gets one of these. Nah, that's uh, that, that that's just too much. That's but, cool. <laughs> uh, normally, we do like to try to think like, okay, on a scale of one to ten, could we take one of these things in a fight? And I'm thinking that's a, uh, I'm gonna give that a one. I, I, I don't think it's a fat no. Yeah. No, this is just like a the the chances of me being able to get it to sit still it's, long enough to just like kind of <laughs> stick it together with a welder. It's like, essentially nah, a uh, spider tank with five different ray beams that it could It's <laughs> like, like, dude, I, I don't even think I'm. I don't think I could take on the kill dozer, let alone a spider kill dozer. <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention its stats. So its stats aren't that crazy, surprisingly. Really? So the strength is twenty two. Dex of 16, Constitution of 20, Intelligence of 3, Wisdom of 11, Charisma of 4. So these are purely kind of like battle creatures, right? They're not smart. They don't think. They don't really do anything except what they're told. (laughs) But that's Mm. also its own kind of. (laughs) I I feel like the the only practical way to fight one of these is, you know, just to... You know, whipping out some thermite, you know, and thermite <laughs> not too hard to make, you know. Uh, I'm you thinking a good, a good mirror. <laughs> just let them shoot you with their eyes and just bounce it right back, right? Ooh, that, that is a classic strat. That's how yeah. you kind of defeat a beholder in some cases. Yeah, just use the mirror, gotta, right? Yeah, just lure it into a house of mirrors. and just... <laughs> <laughs> It'll fry itself. It'll be like, what yeah. the fuck? Hey. Be like, ah, there, there's other ones. There's so many of my kind here. <laughs> it'll, it'll turn into a laser rave and uh, ho- hopefully it finishes oh, the job. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's not immune to its own beams, right? Except nah, for maybe the paralysis. Nah. See? Look so, at that. Hmm. Everybody just yeah. polish it up your shield and you'll all be fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yep, but they are uh, CR-14 creatures, surprisingly. So, also known really? as the Medusa Maneuver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll never see you coming. Mm-hmm. But yeah, hope you guys enjoy a little bit of a lore dump. <laughs> <laughs> I 
it, it's absolutely like a damn I, I i don't even know what to do with that it's just like you could really just be like oh well i've had enough of your shit this this monster of a thing's coming after mm-hmm. you just you're like hey, yeah. sick him <laughs> exactly and, and like you said i think the medusa maneuver would be definitely a top strategy if you wanted yeah. to fight one of these things and just like but other than that well mm, a, a little bit of thermite <laughs> that's yeah, all i got melted, yeah, i'm not yeah. really sure what you could uh i mean essentially could you fight a tank i mean if, if i had thermite your yeah in your ear there <laughs> You just go up. <laughs> okay, okay, gotta take the powdered aluminum. Gotta take the the, the powdered iron. And the, the, I don't know what would be magnesium. worse, like big ones, like big versions, or small. <laughs> like... <laughs> well, yeah. you also could build a tiger trap, right? Make a big there hole that fall down. Oh uh, yeah, big old tiger the trap. size of a person, like fuck. And then put mirrors down in the trap and then they shoot themselves. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's brilliant. That's and it and then it always knows where you are, so you could use yourself as bait. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like I can imagine like the party fights one of these. Maybe they escape, right? Maybe it runs away to survive or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, if it would even do that. But it knows where you are, so it's coming back. And yeah. like <laughs> Oh, I can't imagine it'd be too tactical. With a... I mean, I imagine you, you stole something and like demons are like, I want that back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you're like, go fuck yourself. And he's like, oh, yeah? <laughs> Take this spider. Things, what do these things eat? You got to feed them something, don't they you? Do what do they eat? eat? They are constructs. No, they don't uh, eat anything? Yeah, they're, they're robots. They're robots. They're okay. essentially magical robots. Well, there you go. <laughs> Created Give by it oil. dark magic and the powers of the abyss, I guess. Okay. <laughs> as long as you got those yeah. two things, you're all good then. <laughs> Pull out the cross, I guess. I guess. <laughs> and right, Ryan, demon you robots. got any news for this week? They don't have like a battery yeah. or anything? You can just pull the battery <laughs> up? Or... Yeah, just, yeah, just, just rip out. Oh, this kind of like a battery. <laughs> you know? Like, hey, the bat the battery compartment's right underneath there. Slide under there and get those batteries for us. Yeah, just to rip out its double A's. That's right. You know, I, I imagine they probably do have some type of like core, you know? A core. Yeah. <laughs> I got unfortunately I got the corded version, so we can only fight with the <laughs> <laughs> it's just full of people who would have got the wireless <laughs> one. Start sharp boy and lava girl. That was great. That's, if you guys want to come over here, we'll fight you. But otherwise, we're stuck. We get, <laughs> we only, our extension cord is only like 25 feet. So. If any of our listeners out there remember Shark Boy and Lava Girl. All right, Sam. Uh, moving into nerd news this week. It, it's been a slow news week, but uh, uh, you know, I, I did look into some of what Wargamer was cooking up for their articles, and uh, but we, we do have something. This is TNF bringing you nerd news. All right, Sam. So this week in nerd news, mm. uh, you're you're aware of how the the new 2024 D and D Player's Handbook is uh, coming out, and the, the, there's a yeah. a lot of the stuff that's been kind of pre released. People are getting all checking it out and whatnot. And uh, every uh, every nerd and their mothers out there just kind of uh, hyper analyzing all the classes, trying to figure out what is out of all the differences what's the best what's the worst right and uh, i guess after uh, i guess a lot of people have kind of come to a, a little bit of a consensus uh, on the the rogue actually being like the, the the big loser of all this and it's just like mm-hmm. damn but thieves are usually kind of on top of things and, and here they are falling behind interesting and, 
Yeah, a little bit from the article. It says uh, some of their new abilities, like the cunning strike, uh, allowing for creative status effects during sneak attacks. And I like that. Yeah, I do like that. Like uh, they they get some uh, additional benefits from uh, being able to be more versatile with with how they use their sneak attacks, as well as the weapon mastery system. But they they ultimately seem to be falling behind uh, damage wise. Uh, mm -hmm behind ranger and monk which uh, a lot of people aren't I mean, too keen on yeah it makes sense i guess because it's like how are you outputting the same like damage as like a monk who can hit like an eight times in one turn you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah it, it seems like one of those things where it might be a little bit more sensationalized i'm not too certain on it i i really do think that how powerful anything really is at a table comes down to who's running the game and right yeah who's running the game who's yeah. running the player if they're using its strengths correctly like yeah a absolutely because like it it's kind of up to the dm to give the player a chance to shine off on their mm -hmm. own right you give them like the blocks and they build the castle, you know? Exactly, exactly. But uh, really that that's about uh all we've got th this week. Lame. What do you in, in your opinion, what do you think is the weakest class? Um honestly, I I don't know what I would say is the necessarily the weakest. Uh yeah, I feel like that in itself is like hard to determine because they're all strong in different ways, right? Like yeah, I, I do. Gonna say a cleric is weaker than like a fighter. Like that doesn't make sense. Like no, no, it it certainly doesn't. It's one of those things where, like I said, uh, how good anything is is purely yeah. dependent on who's running the game at a given time. I feel like if anything, I would maybe say warlock just because they don't get a whole lot of spell options. Like, or they don't get a lot of spell slots really. But, like, I don't know. Even mm. then, like, spells as a whole is, like... <laughs> now, that's something that's remedied by a, having a regular coffee break. And once again, that comes down to the DM running the table and wh whether or not right. they let you uh, take an hour in between uh, situations. Yeah. Look, I, I'm curious if any of our listeners out there have... Uh, thoughts on this let us know how you feel and what you think uh bob you used to play a little bit of D, &D back mm -hmm. in the day well, uh, how do you feel about how uh, like uh like hmm, maybe i'm thinking uh wrong on this. like uh, i guess how things were for it back then like uh like was anything seem like uh, particularly weaker than anything else or just like kind of as far oh as far as the characters and so forth yeah so yeah i mean everybody wanted to be a monk or a ranger right uh and yeah. so but i always like to be the thief i don't know why even though that was kind of a weaker character typically at least starting out right so mm, yeah um but i always liked the thief i don't know why and i think it has to do with you know kind of your uh your own uh kind of fantasies about the role right so yeah if you're in the role of the thief then you you in your mind right you're like i'm going to be you know this good thief that uh, i'm right. not good as in good and evil but good as in i can steal a lot of good things and uh yeah. have That's a lot of thing, fun. like assassins and like thieves mm -hmm. and rogues and stuff like that are not meant for like direct combat so right, like, right. You sneak around, right? You're the backstabbing kind of people. You're like, you guys go up there and fight, and then I'm gonna sneak around back and I'll steal, you know, whatever we're looking for. Yeah, any, just, any kind of potions or any kind of treasure or whatever. And then, you know, if I get in the spot, I'll stab somebody in the back or cut their hamstring or something, and then you guys can take them out. And that's the role of the thief. But you know, I think a lot of times people are just like, you know don't want to do that they're like okay we're all gonna go fight let's everybody go yeah. fight you know it's like no no you gotta you have to pick your players it's right a, it's a little more of a tactical mind right yeah exactly, exactly. It, it does seem like a a lot of um, modern D D versus old school D D seems to be very uh 
it, like the mindset behind it is fundamentally different. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. something that I've talked with my dad often about where it's just like back in the day, like, like you said, a thief type character would be more tactical. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go sabotage something. Right. Sab oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm going to go like, steal something. I'm going to go open the door or something, you know, uh, sneak around and get inside <laughs> and do and mess things up. Um, yeah. I mean, rather than being kind of brute force kind of a situation. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Definitely. So ultimately, I think it's going to be uh, time will tell as far as uh, the utilities that uh, people are able to get out of this stuff. Right. There's more to combat than just damage, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. You have to be uh, stealthy. You got to be sneaky. Sometimes you just go yeah. pick stuff and don't even fight anybody. <laughs> just go take it. What are you gonna do when like your DM throws a monster at you that like can't be beaten? Run away! Monsters, Run you know? away! <laughs> oh, you're dead! Like I don't know. Just set a trap. Well, but that's no fun. So I think as as part of the, being the dungeon <laughs> right. master, you it has to have a survivability, right? Yeah. There yeah. has to be an out. There has to be uh, your ability to continue another <laughs> day, even maybe wounded, but not just. You know, oh, you open the door and then everybody gets shot in the face. That's the end of it. <laughs> and, you know what I mean? I mean, that's no fun. That's not a fun uh, game. You have oh, to Rob's have. Fall. Yeah. You have to <laughs> yeah. Have I mean, if you make it obvious that if you open the door, you get shot in the face, then you're stupid and that you deserve that. But if it's not <laughs> obvious, really. if it's, you know, if, it, if it's if it's kind of blind blindside you, then no, I don't think that's fun. And I don't I think that the. Uh, the person running it needs to, you know, rethink some of those things. That, yeah. that, that reminds me, people got to stop, like, undercutting the idea of, like, checking for traps. It's like, <laughs> you should check for traps <laughs> at all I think, uh, I think <laughs> last uh, game session really highlighted <laughs> that for you guys. Because <laughs> uh, in the last uh, game uh, I ran for our, our group, uh, they were going through a forest and there's a guy that uh, runs this whole pirate crew uh, mm -hmm. called the, uh, the, the, they call themselves the Thai man pirates. And this guy's whole gimmick is ties mm -hmm. and they keep stumbling into these little Thai based snare traps. Uh. <laughs> And it's just like he gets himself strung up into his tree, then like pulled off to the side and uh, just getting caught up in these ties. It's just like, well, you, you guys perceived these ties. Like, <laughs> maybe, just maybe you, you maybe you should uh, check. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you be like, oh, can we see them? <laughs> we just kind of like walk through anyway. <laughs> mm. But, you know, you guys will have a chance to be able to <laughs> move forward, M maybe a, a little bit more uh, cautious of all these ties. Cause, oh, uh, you live and you learn. <laughs> yeah, but if, if you no. set it up to where, yeah, you have learning moments, right? So you're like, okay, this is probably, this is going to be bad news down the road. Then at least you can kind of ease into it. And then if you decide yeah. to not pay attention, then that's your fault. Yeah, True. exactly. Real. And like there there was an era in the hobby where like lots of players would be like, oh, it's a 10 foot pole. I'm totally buying one of those. <laughs> and, and modern D&D &D is just like, why is there a 10 foot pole on the why list of items we can buy? Well, why would I buy one? And it's just like <laughs> uh, people that have been around for a while is just like, well, you see the 10 foot pole is re really cool. For one, you can poke the Grinch. For two, you can right. check for traps. Yeah, exactly. put it out in front of you exactly, and it's good joke. <laughs> it is a good exactly. I wouldn't touch you with the ten foot pole. Well, by the way, <laughs> pulls out a ten foot pole. Got one. Yeah. yeah, let's see what happens. <laughs> let's see yeah, what happens. If I, if I put this thermite on the, the, the little bucket, <laughs> thermite pole. Uh, there's a. You see that on and off switch that Ooh. I can reach with this ten foot pole on the back of that uh, creature. Yeah, I'm just gonna poke no monster is ready for the power of yeah. the gold, duct tape, and thermite. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I've been dragging a 10 foot pole around, but hey, whatever. All right. Uh, Sam, uh, yes. one of the. Now, moving on to our, our next segment, we, we do like to kind of highlight some of the uh, content that uh, 
people in the community kind of make themselves the, the homebrews that people mm-hmm. make for their their D and D tables. That because people are come up with all kinds of creative stuff. So uh, Sam, do you want to kick us off? Sure. Generic realm, generic realm, lots of fun, excellent. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> Going into the generic realm. Pretty generic for this one this time. I bring you guys the Traveler's Tea Strainer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, all right. Okay. Is this some kind you of know, uh, double entendre? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. the idea of potions, you know, they're pretty widespread. Everyone knows you can make elixirs, make potions, make buffs, you know, whatever. But what about teas, right? <laughs> uh, you know, you I'm, I'm getting lot. some, you I'm getting some, some vibes. water <laughs> and some magical herbs or something. Who knows? You know, creativity. So often found behind many a barkeep's counter, this tea strainer is more than meets the eye. The runes on the capsule can be rotated to create a specific flavor of tea. Okay. Once the rotation is set, you may place it into your cup of water. It must be placed into a cup to work. To activate this magical strainer, you must touch the gem at the end of the chain. Your water begins to boil at the perfect temperature, then briefly glows bright, briefly glows light purple before becoming ready to drink. Should you add a healing potion into the tea while the strainer sits in it, the tea will turn black if there is any poison. If there is no poison, the tea will then grant you the warmth of loving memories upon each sip. Uh, okay, so it's kind of like a little quality of life uh, thing right yeah. there. You could check for poisons, you know, you could make some you you know, make tea. tea for your party. You could, I imagine, nope, have your DM give you some magical herbs you find. You could try something out. You know, ideas are plenty. Mm. Sometimes it's useful than I thought. Yeah. I often talk about, you know, weapons or armor or something like that, but something a little bit simpler sounds nice. Yeah. It's the small things. It doesn't take up much room in your pack. Something like a restorative, you know, healing tea for your party during a short rest could do a lot. Oh, absolutely. Not to mention now, it's he... civilized. You know, you're civilized. <laughs> yeah. 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 Very you're high brow. You have got out of a rough fight, you know, you're barely living. Mm-hmm. What hits better than a hot cup of tea? You know? <laughs> have a spot of tea. Would you like yeah. one? I oh, know that'd your be hands perfect. been obliterated, but it's okay. Have some tea. <laughs> That's perfect for like a, just this a tea obsessed uh, B- British type character, or mm-hmm. like maybe someone's like really uh, leaning into like a Uncle Iroh type character. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I love that. <laughs> hmm, this could be a deadly poison, or it could be a delicious tea. There's, there's only one way to find out. Right. All right. I like the idea of this being like a magic weapon too. It is a wondrous, uncommon item, so you know it has some novelty. Yeah, you know what? I I'd give that a uh, I'd say a seven out of ten. Like it, it's good. It adds a little bit more chance for people to kind of role play their little in between uh, things. It has a little bit of utility. I can see this being something you you know find in like a someone's house chest or something and you're like oh okay this is kind of cool <laughs> yeah it's one of those things that a player might forget that they have but could still have a lot of fun uh with yeah. it so mileage may vary really kind of depends on uh, what your players are up to uh, yeah. you I have tea every day you have tea time so then therefore and me, personally i love tea just in like my normal life yeah. so like mm. if i had one of these i'd be using it I, I think it'd be a great way for players to just kind of like really lean into the joke of tea time. Be like, hold <laughs> up, hold up. We, we need to take a short rest. Yeah, what if you have tea like break, a guys? Tea cleric break. or something that heals through like. Who's got the biscuits? Tea, you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> tea time is like a restorative hour. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, wow. Oh, it's been a long day of just slaughtering orcs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. T- time for tea. Exactly. <laughs> no <sighs> play for tea. Damn. So shout out to Studio Evans. They do have a Patreon and they do have a Reddit. So shout out to them. Thanks for making this. Mm, I, like I did put the link in the description because I thought it was pretty cool. 
Now, uh, leaning in more into some of the more unhinged uh, styles of homebrew, ah, yes. I, I, I present to you, you, uh, let's see, uh, let me look at the thing, because... Barbarian. <laughs> yeah, from the Frisky Risque. Excuse me. Too much tea. <laughs> I, I present to you guys the uh, barbarian subclass Path of the Unhinged Woman. <laughs> is this is this a charm? What is this? <laughs> it's a it's a type of barbarian. Oh, yeah, okay. like uh, in, in modern uh, D anD D, we have what are called subclasses, which are gotcha. just like. But once you get to like a, a a certain level, like a level three for a barbarian, you choose mm -hmm. a subclass and you get like some oh. extra uh, abilities that come from that. So you could be an unhinged woman? Uh, I guess yeah. so. <laughs> Is there no equivalent to male version or no? Uh, uh, the sane man. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's in touch with his feminine side. Okay. Well, that's oh, fine. God. He takes after his mom. Holy oh, shit. With his mom unhinged as well? I don't know. <laughs> his mom uh, was the unhinged woman, yeah. The original? <laughs> How interesting. Yeah, okay. What, and what, it, it, what is the unhinged part? I mean, what is the what puts yeah, what you into that unhinged? class? What unhinges you? Uh, that's it. You know what? There's a little bit of a description here. A, a drow emerges from a shadowed alley, dripping in the blood of her enemy. A drunken dwarf who dared demand she smile. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> An icy okay. cackle washes through the echoing halls of Candle Keep, where a halfling just uh, cracked open a librarian's ribcage as if he were a book she might borrow. <laughs> okay. Uh, like all barbarians, the unhinged woman is most powerful when harnessing her rage. It is a, it is more than a, a fleeting feeling and often knows no bounds. Eviscerating anyone caught in the crosshairs of the unhinged woman's whims. <laughs> <laughs> While they may abide by some kind of moral compass known only to themselves, many are agents of chaos who worship a insert god name i'm not pronouncing here <laughs> the god of chaotic evil <laughs> now this does come with the some uh features and abilities uh the first is uh, aptly named unhinged uh, a twisted dark hatred inside uh, uh lives inside so uh do what's right shown to Show the world what it created. Okay, yeah, a little bit more flavor text there. As you become an un as you become an unhinged woman at third level, twice per short rest, you may become unhinged as a reaction to taking damage. While mm -hmm. unhinged, you gain the following abilities until the end of your next turn. You deal an additional d one d six psychic damage on each of your melee attacks. Okay. Each uh, time you miss, you may take a non-reducible psychic damage equal to half your barbarian level and gain advantage on your next attack roll Ooh, okay mm -hmm. okay okay your movement is unaffected by difficult terrain and spells and other magical effects uh, can neither reduce your speed nor cause you to be paralyzed or restrained i like that yeah mm -hmm. restraining orders don't stop her yeah <laughs> oh, you, the only way to stop her is to, to recite uh, all of your various anniversaries <laughs> tell her she's acting like your ex yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. really do it. for 10 minutes after becoming unhinged you have advantage on death saving throws and disadvantage on charisma checks and wisdom saves mm -hmm. while unhinged uh, would and at the end of your turn, you may choose to extend your unhinged status until the end of your next turn instead by taking a non-reducible uh, psychic damage equal to your proficiency bonus. Okay. So by slowly descending into madness, hurting yourself in the process, you can continue to be unhinged. Yeah, nice. sounds good. I like it. I'm and then everybody's see. not doing this. <laughs> well why can't everyone be an unhinged woman yeah <laughs> uh, at level six you get the pushback feature uh, 
Let's see. When you fail a wisdom saving throw while raging, you may use your reaction to end the effect and add one d six plus your proficiency bonus to the first damage roll you make against the creature that forced uh, the save. When you okay. use this feature a number of times per long rest, equal to your prof- yeah, so you can use that a uh, number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. So hmm. that's not okay. bad. Nice. And let's see. <laughs> The, the, the name of this next ability that you get at level 10. <laughs> oh no, you're suddenly killing me. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it, you can fake being calm like before the storm that destroys. At 10th level, <laughs> if you make an attack against any creature that hasn't taken a turn in combat yet, you may extend... You may expend a use of your rage to enter a rage. For the purposes of that initial attack, you are considered raging. Okay. okay. Uh, as also at 10th level, you may uh, now become unhinged at the same time as you are raging. Okay. So that's, oh, that, that's stackable. Oh. That's uh, two things at the same time. Okay. <laughs> like double coupons. Yeah. Nothing gets you more unhinged than showing up and finding out they won't take your coupons. That's right, exactly. <laughs> I'm not now mad you can at you. Play your Karen in your local D and D. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean if they expired? <laughs> You're expired. I don't see a date on here. <laughs> Pull, pulls axe out of purse. <laughs> <laughs> there are no dates on these no, coupons. No, no dates. <laughs> okay. So the capstone for this subclass, uh, completely unhinged, follow your heart, be true to yourself, live your life, bring destruction and ruin to your foes. At 14th level, while you are unhinged, you gain 15 feet of movement, and any creature that makes an attack of opportunity against you rolls with disadvantage. Mm. Additionally, as a reaction to taking psychic damage while unhinged, you may choose to share your suffering. Oh shit! <laughs> tripling the psychic damage you take, and choosing one creature you can see within sixty feet of you to take the same amount of damage. Damn! Oh my gosh! That's okay. I see. I see the synergy. Uh, okay, you can start. You know, just let other people feel how <laughs> psychotic you are. I, I see how, how it is. How makes you feel? <laughs> it makes me feel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, yeah. I'd say this has, it's surprisingly, it sounds like a kind of fun thing to play. It does sound fun. Like, uh, it'd be, I don't know how the rest of the party would handle playing around this kind of thing. Like, (laughs) I mean, like the the resident Yandere uh, of the party being just completely psychotic. Yeah, I don't know. It'd take a very special kind of player to be able to make that work without being a problem for everybody that they're playing yeah, with. Become a problem player. Like just, so everybody just hangs back. We're just going to hang back. And then you go. You know, yeah, they're just like, you know what? Hands off. Yeah. We're going to just take a step so back. We're we're magic. Yeah, we're just, gonna, you know, nah, no, we're, we're good. We're good. You're, you, you do you. Tea here. <laughs> you We're just gonna sip some tea. Yeah. I would like to see this class have some sustain. I think there's mm. a lot of like you know you deal damage to yourself, even though it's probably low amounts. It, it is it's low amounts of psychic damage, and like a uh, barbarians are typically like once they're in a rage, they're gonna they take reduced damage to begin with. But it's non-reducible psychic damage. Yeah, so it's like everything else is reducible. The psychic damage, no. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah, definitely. I could see, like, then I guess you were speaking a little too strong. Maybe, like, a while unhinged, get, like, some lifesteal or something. I don't know. <laughs> I kind of like, the... like a D6. I don't know. I don't know. I, I like the idea of just kind of, like, sharing like the it. misery and just, like, a, the psychic damage kind of, like, accumulating. But, like, barbarians have so much health, it's, like, negligible. Yeah, they're, they're fairly bulky, just naturally. I like I it, too. That sounds fun. Yeah, I mean, who who doesn't want to be the, <laughs> the stalker, psychotic ex? <laughs> like, 
<laughs> Down with the patriarchy. <laughs> you do it with your own two hands. <laughs> he said I should smile more. Who's smiling now? Now he can't smile anymore. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Get, just get to embody all the stereotypes with that one. <laughs> but all right. We are coming up on the end here. Yep. And uh, Bob, where can people find you? Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you said come up on the end. I was like, oh, I thought you were going to do some kind of wrap up there. The uh, Oh, you can come to Static Radio or at Static Radio. It's just about anywhere. It's pretty simple. I'm trying to keep it simple here. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I thought you were going to go into a rage there for a second. I'm not sure. <laughs> not quite sure. unhinged yet. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, no. I think you guys should make a new one called the Skull Collector, and then they get unhinged. Oh, oh that'd be a very unhinged. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it sounds sounds good, right? Where It'd be something skulls? else for sure. Write that up, Starboy. You got yeah, skull I like it. I skull collect. <laughs> yeah, you, maybe you could have some kind of magic where you suck the skull out of their head. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and unless they're wearing some kind of enchanted helmet or something, they're That's all crazy. they're all doomed. <laughs> I saw this video where people tried to say that you could animate the skeleton inside someone's body. Uh, I saw you know, that. All, no way that would work, but also ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I saw the one you're talking about, and it's just like, okay, yeah, uh, no, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna allow no, my players to but just yes, go. But no, <laughs> the puppet master. Yeah, right? Like, what do you think this is? I feel like that'd be just <laughs> such a different thing altogether. It, it's a live in... body is not a pile of bones, all right? You fucking crazy people out there. Like, <laughs> it, it's dead. in the same breath. What if they're dead yeah. and then you bring them back to life? Does, does that work? It's got to be know. a pile of bones. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It, it, I'm trying. I people. don't know. I'm trying. <laughs> Like people are always trying to like do weird things. Like, oh hey, I want to cast create water inside mm-hmm. their lungs. Like, in the, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, oh, well, it's drowning. Cool yeah. an idea, but you cannot do that. Funny thing, yeah. Doesn't work. Like, that. Uh, the lungs are not an open container, people. All right. Like, well, when you're breathing. <laughs> there's an opening. <laughs> now that's usually the argument. <laughs> I mean, what if you maybe you just didn't make water and you pissed in their mouth? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was <laughs> the, the bladder's an open container, sure. <laughs> but, but not all the time. Yeah, yeah so crazy just, just drink water. If it was drink, open all the time, you'd just be dribbling all day long. It's, it's, it closes off, right? <laughs> yeah, this is how we're ending the episode. Tom so you can't, you can only get in there. <laughs> Yeah, so you know, you, you cast create water, and you, they are now afflicted with piss driblets. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be, it'll be like they'll be able to follow you because you'll just be leaving a trail of water. Oh, <laughs> You're trackable. Yeah. That, that that'll really kind of cl- kind of clean out the kidneys yeah, and everything. Exactly. Oh my god, I got the dribbles. Somebody in your party you got kidney stones. I know just what you need. Yeah. <laughs> Create hips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kidney stones. I, I know a guy. We'll, we'll, we'll get that magic yeah. work and not knock those kidney stones right out. That's Large probably not how that works. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So this, this has been Dungeons and Talk Show. Sam, where can people find us? You can find us on Twitter, on Facebook, YouTube. You know, wherever you can find podcasts, Spotify, fucking, I think we're on Apple Podcasts, you know, kick, yeah. you know, uh, whatever. Uh, wherever the podcast be podcasting, I suppose. Yeah. Wherever people listen to their stuff. I listen to a lot of books, so we're not on Audible. But well, actually, we, no, we are. We are. We are. We're on Audible. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> they have podcasts on uh, Amazon. So, yeah, there you go. 
Yeah, I, I, I did look into that because my brother has been really big on Audible lately, and he's like, uh, hey, uh, you guys aren't on there. It's just audiobooks right now. Anyone no, wants more of there. us, you yeah. can find us on social medias. We do post sometimes. You know, some of them are pretty engaging with the communities. If people would answer back. Uh, we do also <laughs> have that voicemail now that I don't know the number of. <laughs> 513-570-4443. All right, you heard it here, Say folks. It <laughs> it's 513-570-4443. And as it's we mnemonic because there's four, as I three, say every time, fours. if you want to leave a message, please feel free. We would love to hear from you. Please, no eating, no music in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say this until it happens. All right. <laughs> <laughs> You were, but you were just eating. I watched you. Hey, I muted my mic. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just thought maybe you were really quiet either. I didn't know. I was like, I'm like, what? You get snacks, and nobody else has got snacks. We got to hear munching. Then it'll be me that's munching. <laughs> so it was five one three five seven zero four 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 three. Yes, that that, that there you is go, the you number. Got it. Okay, yeah. just double check. I, I like the idea of a voicemail because then, like, uh, people can send in like uh, any kind of crazy D and D thought, or uh, maybe it'll tell us uh, that we're wrong, and we can play it on the show. Or if you have any like monster suggestions or things you want to hear us talk about, mm-hmm. you know, anything really. Biggest thing, maybe keep it under like three minutes. Maybe we'll play them at the end of the show if they're good. Shit, I, I actually don't know what the time limit is for a voicemail. Uh, I think it's like well, two I don't, is it a Google Mail or Google Voice? Thing? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah it's the Google I think you got Voice pretty thing. good time on there. Yeah, this has got to be. Yeah, there's a, at uh, least two minutes. Yeah. I'm trying to remember the name of it. I think it's, let me look real quick before I tell you what it is and then get it wrong. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, it's not. You got to Google it real quick. <laughs> I got to Google it. I just. Uh, uh, I just got. I can't. I can't wait till we get a call. It's just like you guys are dumb. You know what you're talking about? Speak pipe. (laughs) You guys got speak pipe yet? What is what? Speak pipe. No. Okay, you get. It's like it's like internet voicemail, basically. Yeah. Oh, so you don't have to call pipe. a number. It's a speak pipe. And I think I have speak pipe static radio. So there you go. Interesting. I'm going to well, write that one. You guys down. heard it out here, folks. Let's go and call into static radio through speak pipe. I also have, we also <laughs> have a, we also have a, a, a number. I have a Google voice number. If yeah, I can remember. Yeah, you what go it ahead is. And- yeah. Well, let's, if I can find the darn thing here, let's go. Uh, 314-827-6399. 314-827-6399. Awesome. Uh, you, you can call and leave a message, and I will probably ignore it, and then we'll find it a couple months later. So there you go. Ooh. Sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> like a present to yourself. That's right. <laughs> yeah. You, you could, you know, leave whatever you want. Uh, leave a secret, and then I won't – it'll happen, and then we'll just reveal it later. So there you go. <laughs> I tell I tell all my uh, secrets to every podcast. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> just randomly, yeah. Here's yeah, my just... social security number. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we we can share the debt. <laughs> As always, we hope you enjoyed this episode, the conversations, the monster, the news, whatever. We love you. Until <laughs> next time. That's so nice. I'll see y'all next week.